Ajax women's national team who are here playing the second in their celebration series against Canada. Geld Wenfield is our venue tonight. As we welcome you into the commentary booth, Adrian Healy with Judy Fowdy alongside. It's amazing to think, Julie, isn't it? Just two short months ago, the US in that heartbreaking defeat to Japan in the final. And these games against Canada seem to have a dual purpose, don't they? To celebrate what was achieved, but also to look forward to the next challenge. Yeah, and thankfully for the team, they don't have much time to look back on that loss because Olympic qualifiers are right around the corner, four months away in January. So the most pressing issue right now for Coach Pia Sunhaga of the United States is getting her two stars healthy. Hope Solo in goal for the United States. One year out exactly from major <laughs> shoulder surgery, and she's coming back from that. And then, of course, Abby Wambach, who has had this re repeating heel problem, and she said recently that that heel really was bothering her at the World Cup. Well, Pia Sundag has had a couple of months, hasn't she, to mull over what she's going to do moving forward, and she's decided to go with a little bit of a new formation in these games. Yeah, she's going to go with a 4-2-3-1 with two deeper holding central midfielders. She is calling them possession midfielders, but key for this system is it begs the outside midfielders to get forward. They have to get high to support Abby Wambuck up top, which also lends itself to the outside backs getting forward in this system if you're playing it right. But overall, everything depends on number 15 in the middle right there, Megan Rapino. She will be the wheel for the United States. Everything's going to go through her playmaking and running the tempo for the United States tonight. Well, Canada also looking to move forward with a new start, a new coach on board. They're going to be without their world superstar, though, Christine Sinclair tonight, Julie. Without Sinclair, and they are doing a, a new lineup. They're playing a diamond in the middle with the four pinched in. But they have, they don't have Christine Sinclair. They have Melissa Tancredi, who scored the only two goals on the United States this year in their two games in 2011. John Herbman in his second game in charge of Canada after the 1-1 draw against the United States on Saturday. That game uh, played in Kansas City. John Herbman, who uh, took New Zealand to uh, the World Cup 2011, played uh, actually New Zealand in the last two World Cups. John Herbman, uh, the appointment back on September the 1st for Canada. And Pia Sundhager starting a new cycle, so to speak. And she took uh, some time off, didn't she, after the World Cup. Time to reflect and pause and move forward to the next challenge, the Olympic Games. Just uh, a few moments ago, Hope Solo was honoured uh, just down the road from her hometown, really, in eastern Washington. It's her 100th cap, actually 102, she's already appeared, but first chance to really honour Hope Solo with uh, US President Sunil Gulati there. So all set for the second game in this celebration series. The United States in their dark jerseys going from left to right here in Gerald Wenfield. The second of two games in recently opened MLS stadiums for the US women's team. And looking to push on and build from that 1-1 draw on Saturday. And uh, Julie, perhaps a few teething problems early on with the new system to be expected. Oh yeah, and, and Pia Sunang has talked about that, that it's gonna take some time, but the players are willing to embrace it, and it's good for them. They needed a little bit of change. I said one of her uh, primary motives was to really freshen things up. Let's hope Solo, pulling double duty at the moment. Fresh from uh, Dancing with the Stars. She survived that first round, didn't she? We'll, we'll be looking a little bit at that at half time. He did very well. Rachel Bula tidying things up at the back. Let's uh, take a look at who is uh, primed to perform tonight, fueled by Gatorade. Amy Rodriguez will be our primed to perform player tonight, and she's playing in that outside midfield position, which we showed in the lineup really important that she gets forward she attacks this system all should almost should line up like a 4-3-3 if you're playing it right with three forwards heather o'reilly on one side amy rodriguez on the other and abby wambach in the middle becky salbrand 
Killing the start at right back tonight. Pass picked off. This is Kaylin Kyle. Canada looking to make their own fresh start. We thought the World Cup was painful for the United States. How painful was it for Canada? Three and out. They were home before the postcards. And there were such expectations for them going in as the number six ranked team. Hope Solo first to come out ahead of uh, Rianne Wilkinson. Cap number 103 for her. Abby Wombach's flick on. And Abby Wombach in particular, Julie, is uh, a player who's really looking forward to this new system betting in. She thinks she's going to get more service. She likes the idea of getting more midfielders in there, but but the key right there, and that's a good sign for the United States, is you had Heather O'Reilly and Amy Rodriguez both running off of her, getting high. That is always the challenge. Germany played it very well in the World Cup this summer. Down the line from Stephanie Cox to uh, Amy Rodriguez. Good run from her. She was targeting Abby Wombach. And Wombach is still underneath the cross. A ch real challenge for Karina LeBlanc who was able to adjust but under severe pressure from Wombach. Karina LeBlanc preferred to Erin uh, McLeod. The two of those have really juggled goalkeeping duties for Canada over recent years. And not many goalkeepers actually win this battle even with their ability to come up and punch with Abby Wambach because she's such a force in the air. And you can see Karina LeBlanc hesitates a little bit, maybe need to attack that a little bit more because Abby was crashing hard. Abby Wambach uh, scored in the last five consecutive games for the United States, the last four games at the World Cup. And from the penalty spot, Kansas City in that 1-1 draw early on. The United States had a much better first half in Kansas City than they did the second. It's John Herbert uh, just going out of your picture. Taking over from uh, Carolina Marachi. That's the Canada head coach. He had to be delighted with what he saw from his team. We've really only been with them for uh, a few days prior to that 1-1 draw in Kansas. Now he's had a few more days to work with. <laughs> Nothing like a week on the job and then you get the United States. For more on uh, John Herman, let's join the third member of our broadcast crew. That's Monica Gonzalez. Thanks. In just seven days with his new team, John Herman is bringing back the physical Canadian mentality of old. In the Women's World Cup, we saw Canadian play technical. They tried to pass through their midfield, but that didn't really seem to fit the personality of their team too well, and it didn't give them the results that they wanted. So with Herdman at the helm, look for a Canadian team that presses more and plays more direct soccer. Thanks, Monica. Yeah, Canada almost moved to a uh, more uh, skillful, artful passing game. Tried to, didn't they, under uh, Carolina Marachi? It didn't quite work out for them. Rapino and cleared by Kelly Parker and he even said I went to the team and said what do you want to change when I sat down with them first and that was the thing they wanted to bring back which is really the trademark of the Canadian teams that we've seen I mean you 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 want to play a possession style and you want to put it on the ground and play pretty but you also have that have to have that bite and they all said they want to bring that bite back they're not going to switch it all the way back to going to a blunt hammer, but <laughs> let's have a combination of both in there, which I think is a good a good move for Canada. But the uh, keys of the game, uh, let's take Canada first, uh, Julie, what do you got? Well, I think defensively, this balance, we saw in the first game against the United States last week, they play a really high-pressure defense. So staying compact with that high-pressure defense, knowing when to go, when not to. And then offensively, getting those outside backs forward to give them width because they're playing that pinched-in diamond in the middle of the park in the midfield. It's an early possession for the U.S. inside the Canada half. That pass from Becky... Sandborn going astray. She's one of the changes. Right 
back tonight in the game that started in Kansas City Stephanie Cox another Julie on the opposite side playing left back back here in the city where she performed at Sunwell for the University of Portland Megan Rapino falling into that category too the two of them part of the uh, University of Portland side that won the 2005 NCAA championship. What about the USA tonight, Julie? They're keys to the game for you. Well, I think defensively, putting pressure on Canada's back line and making it uncomfortable for them to set play. And then offensively, getting numbers forward, as we talked about, to help with Abby Wambach. Here's a good example of it right there. You're seeing numbers in the box. And that first time against Canada with that 4 2 3 1 system, not a lot of numbers in the box getting forward. Good foraging work on the far side by Melissa Tancredi and a bad cross either. Sarbrun had to get it away and did so. And Paul with a quick touch from Amy Rodriguez and picked up by O'Reilly. Megan Rapino, she's going to be asked to really pull the strings. That central midfield role just behind Abby Wombach. It's Kaylin Kyle in your picture, actually from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan, self-described prairie girl. <laughs> One of the rising stars of Canadian women's football, only 22. for Stephanie Cox. Cohesive build up through the middle third for the US. As soon as I say that, curse of the commentator, Rapino's pass goes astray. But the idea was there, and I like the positions that Becky Sauerbrunn and Stephanie Cox are getting themselves into, the outside backs for the United States, especially given Becky Sauerbrunn isn't typically an outside back. She's been tried at that center back position when Pia Sunhagen has brought her in. On ball four for Tank reading, she feasts upon these. See the confidence she has trying to shot from long range. She beat Hope Solo off a similar sort of long ball in Kansas City. She could sneak in between those center backs. Two goals already this year on the United States. In the absence of uh, Christine Sinclair, she will be the main threat. Kyle vaulting the challenge and the challenge was deemed a little too fierce from Bueller a free kick for the Canadians referee Christina Ibanez and Cecilman winning just her second cap for Canada trying a long range effort too but safely corralled by Hope Solo another big big crowd here at Geldwen Field. Self-styled at Soccer City. We were here last night for a terrific MLS game. The Portland Timbers and San Jose. What a stadium and crowd. Timbers Army is impressive. They had an open practice here in the United States, did they? Wednesday, middle of the day. And the place was absolutely heaving. Heather O'Reilly's going to lead this try for hey, Becky Sauber. One game for her in Germany. That was the semi final as O'Reilly whips in the cross. Karina LeBlanc dealing with it. You could hear John Herdman. We know he's got a voice screaming to get Rapino. The coach for Canada wanting them marked up tightly on her. Diana Matheson. Stray pass from her, but it might fall uh, conveniently for Kelly Parker. Oh, there was a scene there. Christina Julian was waiting. This is actually the 50th meeting between the United States women's team and Canada. The 
Yes, uh, as you might expect, with a pretty dominant record overall. Five of the last seven games, though, have been pretty narrow affairs. Just one goal wins for the US, and then a draw on Saturday. The gap has definitely been closed, and that was really there's so much expectations going into the world cup as we discussed just for canada six in the world they've never been that high and then to finish as they did last in the world cup especially being hosts of this next world cup in 2015. as you saw the last time canada actually beat the united states though back in march of 2001 that was a game at the algarve cup which is actually hope solo's third cap Amazingly, it took Hope Solo five games to win a game for the United States. And Paul sweeping it wide for Stephanie Gox, who returns it in the direction from where it came. O'Reilly has kept this in. Volts the challenge. Excellent work from Heather O'Reilly. She was asked to do too much the return ball from Shannon Box. Just a little askew. What a wonderful first ball, though, by Stephanie Cox to start that play. And that's the left back for the United States. Getting forward, she just drills it across. And there's going to be so much space on that opposite side because of the system Canada is playing. And Heather O'Reilly doing a good job winning it, just not expecting to get it back. Again, good intentions, though, by the United States. Just a little bit of a technical breakdown there. Well, Shannon Box and Laurie Lindsay. We're going to be asked to play the holding midfielder role, if we're allowed to call it that. Pia Sundaga, Sundaga likes to call it possession <laughs> midfielders, Julie. Yes, do not call it holding, Adrian. <laughs> you have to put a quarter in the bucket every time you do. But that was after Lauren Cheney and uh, Carly Lloyd had played that role on Saturday. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's part of the shift of the system, is trying to figure out how you get all these players on the field. I mean, we don't, we don't even have Lauren Cheney or Carly Lloyd on the field. I think Lauren Cheney will be perfect in that hole. Head away by Sesselman. O'Reilly. Up to Sauerbrunn. And I think the outside back position will be another position Pia Soonhagen is looking at in these next four months. You're seeing two new ones out there right now. One back. I'm going to tee it up. And delightfully. And now Canada looking to hit on the break. This is Julian. Wilkinson. And Tank Reedy will be the target for any aerial delivery into the penalty area. Rianne Wilkinson, well over 100 caps to her name. Well, nowhere does singing in the United States quite like Portland, Julie. I love it. I love the energy here. It's it, it, That game last night, the MLS game, Wednesday night, and then again tonight on a Thursday night. Two just packed houses going crazy. Wonderful job here they've done in Portland with this venue and the franchise, the MLS franchise. Wouldn't it be great to have a women's team here, Adrian? Yeah, can you can you work on that, Julie? <laughs> this is Rapino. On to Abby Wambach. Oh, and a good save from LeBlanc. Amy Rodriguez was wide open. Her shot was on target, but couldn't beat LeBlanc, who palmed it aside. Wonderful save by Karina LeBlanc. And you see Abby with a great first touch. Sees Amy Rodriguez wide open. And Amy actually hits that quite well. Just a very good save by LeBlanc from point blank. Great reaction save. Second goal of the game, and Abby Wambach flinging herself full length to get on the end of it. Didn't keep her header down. And, and here's the beauty of the system though, is you have such an interchange of positions up top. And here's your outside midfielder coming in centrally. 
when it's working and you get numbers flying, you can see she hits it, she stays, keeps it down. That's so easy to fly over the crossbar. Good save again by Karina LeBlanc. Amy Rodriguez denied. Five games at the World Cup, but not the final for Amy Rodriguez. It's Lexi Martin. The uh, sole changes tonight for John Herbert. Lexi Martin at the back for Canada. Stephanie Cox involved in a duel and a tussle out on the far side. Matheson. Now Rapino. Quickly for Laurie Lindsay who sweeps it on in fine style to O'Reilly. Help offered by Sauerbrunn on the overlap. Now O'Reilly has to set out her stall. She found the head of Abby Wambach. But another very good sequence for, sequence for the United States. And with that pinched in midfield for Canada, if the U.S. can switch it quickly, which they are, you can see the space. Look at the space out here on the quick switches. Heather O'Reilly, no player within 20 yards of her. And then you saw Becky Sauerbrunn overlapping and outside back. Good movement. I mean, exactly what Pia Sunaga wants to see in this type of system. Well, Julie, they started to move towards a more possession-oriented game, didn't they, during the World Cup? Sort of game we saw played by Japan and France, perhaps. And that has been a focus of, of Pia's tenure, for sure, is a more possession-style game. It's just, you know, do you have the right players in your system to do that? So interesting to hear Pia talk about a desire to keep things fresh, changing things up, asking the players to come back and play the same system. She thought may have got a little stale. There's the option to go back to 4-4-2, though, if it doesn't work. Well, I think, and most important, just having the, the ability to be versatile and switch on the fly in the middle of the game. Sometimes it, a game dictates that. Got to go to a three front or a one front or a five midfield. Megan Rapino played in all six games in Germany. It's the two starts though. Rodriguez hunting it down. Cleared by Alexi Martin. Quick switch. And Cohen on the near side this time. So, Kaylin Kyle able to get across and disrupt. Quick throw has Abby Wan back inside the area. Clint again on the end of it. It's Rodriguez teeing up Rapino. And another excellent attack by the United States. Just looking to make that. Vital incision. We have to settle for the corner. Third of the game for the US. 20 minutes in in Portland. Now the key for the United States. 20 minutes in. They're dominating the game. Can they pay it off with a goal? Scored early in Kansas City via the penalty spot. Rapino keeping this one low. A bit of a change of approach. He's called everyone out. A follow-up press equally low, but Canada able to uh, tidy things up. ESPN 2's coverage of the Barclays Premier League continues Saturday morning. Manchester City taking on Everton. It's going to be a really good one. Barclays Premier League presented by FIFA Soccer 12, 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN 2 and online ESPN3.com oh, 
Stephanie Cox. Such on from Abby Wambach. Riley makes herself available. Well, Cox just drew the challenge from Ian Wilkinson. It was a good one. Canada having to defend quite furiously. Here comes the cross. Flicked away by Sasselman. United States swarming around the Canadian penalty area at the moment. Again, Canada hold firm. That was Sophie Schmidt bringing the vital toe end in. Another former University of Portland player, Sophie Schmidt. They're all over the place. They're swarming out here, Portland players. She so wasn't sure what sort of reception she was going to get here tonight. Uh, they're true to their own. Yeah. 23 during the World Cup. Already a mainstay. This Canadian national team. 67 caps. It's Kaylin Kyle giving chase, but should be routine for Sauerbrunn. There was a really heavy collision. So two of them got there at the same time. Solo, just the second goalkeeper to reach the 100 cap mark for the United States after uh, Brianna Scurry. <laughs> Sesselman. Interesting story, Lauren Sesselman, isn't she? She's at the age of 28, just broken into the Canadian national team. Number 16 in the Bombay picture. She just became a Canadian citizen last year. She's a dual citizen, actually. Grew up in Green Bay. And that is the type of outside back John Herdman is trying to bring into this team because she is a forward by trade that he converted to an outside back, which I think is a smart move. But, you know. Done many times by the United States. Brandy Chastain, Joy Fawcett. She ended the game on Saturday, didn't she, playing up front, and actually had a glorious chance to win the game for Canada. That's her pass. And the game nowadays dictates that you have to have backs that can play both sides of the ball. Rodriguez. Someone's clearance. It's the United States possession again. And you're seeing a lot of interchange between Christy Rampone, who's on the ball, who's lined up as the center back, but now you're seeing she's playing a right back, and, and Becky Sauerbrunn. Those two constantly switching. I actually like Christy Rampone in that outside back position. She was, again, another former forward scored many goals at Monmouth College. Christy Rampon is uh, heading towards her last year. She said she is going to retire if the United States make the Olympics in London. We'll come back to that because uh, he's on the move. Great service, Rampon! And again! And LeBlanc flinging herself to collect. Well, Christy Rampon has ever He's only ever scored four goals for the U.S. in 240 appearances. Is Tancredi at the other end? Tancredi allowed to shoot just wide. Let's go back to that opportunity for uh, Christy Rampone. And, and this is why Christy Rampone, first a wonderful ball in by Lori Lindsay. But you can see Christy Rampone eager on that back post. She's sneaking in laid off beautifully even not, if not intentionally and she's comfortable in front of goal i asked pia before the world cup when they were searching for an outside back why not christy rampone let's put her out wide and she said ah, i like her running that back line from the central position which i get as your captain she's leading that line but i think with someone as stable as a becky sauerbrunn next door you could you can do it 
First Lady of Soccer Moms, Christy Rampon, the last surviving member of the 99 team. And cross from Rodriguez, finishing across the face of goal. Rampon again. Rodriguez, nice flight to the cross. LeBlanc could only palm it away. Well, they have been living dangerously at times, the Canadian defence. Well, no reward yet. The only one has been. Uh, and I, and I know some enterprising play. Yeah, and I know this is just a celebration match and a friendly and everything, and it really has no greater meaning except for the fans can come out and 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 you can get a look, you know, going forward into Olympic qualifiers. So that's important. But you know, you look back at the World Cup final in the first half and the missed chances, and you don't want that as a team to become a recurring theme, even in a match like this. And so, because that's fresh on their mind, you know that. They look back on that game and think, the United States thinks that we could have closed that game out at halftime. That could and should have been two or three up, really, against Japan. Their best football of the entire tournament, didn't they? Oh, yeah. This is Rapino looking for one back. And she climbed above Carmelina Moscato there. Couldn't really generate the power she was looking for off the header. Good to see Megan Rapino again pulling the strings, finding players, and Abby in a tough position that far out, not getting much momentum behind that to be able to put much on goal. What did you do? Stay with us at halftime, by the way. Uh, Julie did a terrific piece with Abby Wombat, as she describes in some detail that equalizer against Brazil. Well worth hearing and, and seeing. And the heartache of the World Cup. I mean, as you said, Adrian, they played their best game in that final, and that's what makes it so raw and, and you hold on to for so long. I mean, that will haunt them forever. You almost wish you had played terribly so you could say, ha, ah, you know, we had no chance to begin with. But when you play that well and it's in the palm of your hands, it just kills. So near and yet so far. For Canada, it was just so far. I could not have predicted their uh, implosion in Germany. They're actually one of the fancy dark horses heading in. It's perhaps a team to go all the way. They had the misfortune, didn't they? To be drawn into a very tough group indeed. And the order of matches didn't help them either. They had to play yeah. the opener against Germany. And then to have Christine Sinclair break her nose in that first game. I mean, even though she played the second game with a mask, I mean, that, as anyone who has gone through that nose, is incredibly difficult to do. Half an hour gone. The USA chance getting louder in Portland. We're gonna have some defending to do here, the US, as Tancredi takes a spill. Rachel Bueller coming across. Just gets her a little bit late there. Good call by the referee. These are the free kicks. You hate to give up as a, a team, though, with the momentum the U.S. has right now. They're really dictating the pace of the game. These are the ones that catch you against the run of play. And you can see Tancredi on that back post. She will be their main target for Canada. Is there a test in the offense for Hope Solo? The first uh, cross is dealt with. And no damage done at all. Megan Rapino. Some urgency to try and get the US back on the front foot. And the next discernible target for the United States Julie Olympic qualifying which begins uh, in mid-January so see this attack unfold as Stephanie Cox 
cuts inside. Run back the targets. Who else but LeBlanc? Has been involved. She's been active. And the ball. And it caused a problem for Rachel Bueller. She was able to adjust. Every opportunity looking to play it long for Tancredi. Interesting, is it? We're seeing two teams trying to, in a way, change their philosophies. They were playing just a couple of months ago. Interesting stages for both of them, and, and with not a lot of time. Four months, as you said, Adrian, until those Olympic qualifiers. One back, encouraged to head straight towards goal. Rapino is in here. Megan Rapino back off the bar. Abby one back. Sees her shot blocked, and the US are denied again. Megan Rapino so close to a goal which would have been celebrated wildly here in the city in which she played her college football. Well, they're getting closer, Julie. Still not that elusive breakthrough. No, but if you're Pia Sunhaga standing on the sideline with this new formation, she said, you know, in the first game against Canada, we struggled a little bit with it. She's got to be much more pleased with this because they look confident on the ball. Although Canada is giving them more time in that first game, they were flying numbers at them with high pressure. Megan Rubino, by the way, if she scores, has threatened to go and... Uh, Saw off one of those pieces of wood, which they love to do here at Portland Timbers games. <laughs> Sophie Schmidt, just a little bit behind Christina Julian. Gonks. And then from Laurie Lindsay. So the box had to be a full stretch there to get in ahead of Kelly Parker. You know, continuing to be busy and involved. You can see the United States moving the ball. Canada just unable to get any pressure on the ball. Doing a very good job of making them chase. That gets frustrating for a team. McCone. Neat and tidy for Sauerbrunn. And Lindsay. And that was picked off by Kaylin Kyle. Gardo trying to bring it over back, but she's caught. And now Rodriguez. Running into traffic, though. Kelly Parker. Heavy touch from Tancredi. And Shannon Box. Kelly Parker with another uh, full blooded challenge. Those two have really been competing for those loose 50 50 balls. And I think Shannon Box has come off the worst in this collision. Shannon going in hard. Shannon Box, as she always does, that is the beauty of having a holding central midfielder like her. She's going to come in to tackles hard. She is that ball winner for the United States. Every game at the World Cup, except that group game against Colombia, and she was rested. Lindsay. And 
Cohn. Fourth all time. Yes, list of uh, Caps winners. Rampone coming towards the end of a uh, remarkable career. ESPN 2's coverage of uh, MLS continuing at Thursday night, by the way, with a big Eastern Conference matchup as the Philadelphia Union host DC United. MLS presented by Adidas on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com. Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Race of the Eastern Conference looks like it's going to go down to the last kick of the ball. Especially with some of the results on Wednesday night. No one seems to want to claim those playoff places for their own at the moment. It's going to be a very, very interesting last few weeks of the season. And it's handball given against A. Raj. That early opportunity, didn't she? Amy Rodriguez. I mean, you're looking at six minutes, seven minutes until the end of the half. So really pressing these last minutes for the United States because you want to go in at halftime with a goal in hand, given some of the looks they've had. Rodriguez really positive onto Rapino. He goes for goal! And again the woodwork. Well, twice she has thundered shots against that crossbar. Well, is it going to be her night in Portland? And nays are like flashbacks to that World Cup final. I mean, how many posts and crossbars then as well? Stakes are much different tonight, though. But still, you can see the frustration with Megan Rapino. She wants one tonight here in Portland. And Sophie Schmidt picking this off. Kyle and to Lexi Martin. And Julian on the move. Christina Julian for Canada. And Stephanie Cox able to intervene. Carolina Moscata. One of those uh, Canadian players who plays uh, in Sweden. With uh, Pitea, Tank Brady, is actually a club teammate. Let's go back to those uh, Rapino chances, Julian. And here was the earlier one, Abby drawing four defenders. Megan Rapino in, just unable to finish it. And here she is with a lot of space and decides from out wide. She's going to take a look. You can see Karina LeBlanc off her line a little bit. She looks up. What a great effort. I think the crossbar is still rattling from that second effort. It's the one goal at the Women's World Cup, but never to be forgotten contribution for the biggest goal of all. Maybe one max header in the dying seconds against yeah, Brazil. That left-footed cross in that Brazil game. When I saw her after that, she said, "You know, I don't, I don't even use my left foot. I've never <laughs> even hit a ball like that in my life with my left foot. I don't know what came over me." Well, Megan Rapino hosted an interesting night at the Kells uh, Soccer Pub here in Portland a couple of nights ago where she had to judge a handshake competition as this uh, ball comes in no trouble for Hope Solo whatsoever the last few minutes of the first half here in Portland Adrian Healy and Julie Foudy here to see the uh, second and final game in this celebration series. The United States will be wondering how they're not in front. They still have time to get in front before the break. Happy one back to that end. Driving into the area, but Martin in her way.
Good defense by the 21-year-old. Only in her eighth international appearance for Canada. Faced up against Abby Wambach. Wambach's feet at scoring in the quarterfinal, the semifinal, and the final. And the Women's World Cup was unique. Amy Rodriguez. Paling Kyle. And, uh, that will be all tidied up by Rachel Bueller. And we've talked a lot about uh, Christy Rampol. Four full time in the uh, caps list for the United States women's team. Okay, more on her now from uh, the other member of our broadcast group, Monica Gonzalez. I had an opportunity to ask Christy Rampone who she felt would fill her shoes when she retires after the Olympics. And the first name she mentioned was Becky Sauerbrunn. She said she's very impressed with how calm and composed she is on the ball and that she's extremely intelligent with her decisions. The only thing she needs to work on is being more vocal. Lovely move inside from Amy Rodriguez. All that was missing was the final touch. Thanks for that, Monica. Amy Rodriguez. Oh, she skipped so delightfully around the first challenge. Dealt well with that, that pressure. In, in going to... Here it is, you see Abby facing up. Finds that little seam, which is a great hole. Just not getting enough on it. But... But to Monica's point, with Sauerbrunn, she is incredibly composed on the ball. Which is why a lot of people are saying she is, she's ready. You know, she's ready to get in there. And, and, and now you see the versatility playing center back, playing outside back. Yep, just a 14th appearance tonight. Yeah. Quite a remarkable appearance streak going in the WPS. And she played every minute of the first two seasons in the WPS, and that streak was still growing, uh, going, and it was only broken by the World Cup this summer. Final minute of the first half. Stay with us at half time. Whatever you do, we'll uh, take a look at uh, Abby Wambach. And also, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have, Hope Solo in uh, Dancing with the Stars. We'll take a little uh, recap on her first night performance. One minute of stoppage time here. It's going to be played. Tancredi on the turn! Now, there was an offside flag up. It wouldn't have counted. She really didn't pick up with it. The shot with any venom. But again, the danger of a 0 0 scoreline. And Canada is a team that will fight for 90 minutes. You know that about them. Two goals against the United States already this year for Melissa Tancredi. Scored it in the first game of the year. And played in China. I think you'll see a lot of changes for the United States at halftime as well because Pia has said she wants to obviously use these games to give everyone a look. Probably see Cheney, Tobin Heath, yep, Heather all, Mitz. Yep, she said all 21 players called in would get some sort of action over the two games. Same 21 players who went to Germany. Kelly O'Hara, I bet as well. Rapino, is there going to be one more opportunity? The cross is going to have to come in late from that same side of the pitch. Nothing allowed to get the cross, it's still going though, Rapino, what about that for persistence? Now well, it looked to be uh, a hopeless task, she was penned in, had three Canadian defenders all over her, and she is raising her game here. In front of... Uh, Many fans who know her so well, she's got the chance to send in one last corner. And I love the urgency. Knowing she wants to get one before the half. Great service to Shambox! Well, that has been the story of the first half for the United States, which comes to an end now. So near and yet so far. 
It's the story of the summer, wasn't it? The first 45 minutes here against Canada. No different, Julie. And here is that final look. Good ball played in. Canada doesn't clear it. And Shannon Box just sitting there when that apple drops her. And sometimes you're thinking, well, how did I get so lucky here? Puts it over. But again, the United States just unable to convert. Should be two or three up going into halftime. Hope Solo not really tested in the first half. She was certainly tested on Monday night. Dancing with the Stars. Uh, we'll recap that when we return at halftime. Also a great piece with Abby Wombach. Not to be missed. as well, one for Amy Rodriguez. There have been some changes at halftime to tell you about. One of them on the ball there, Stephanie LaBay has come in in goal for Canada, replacing Karina LeBlanc. It's confirmation of that switch. They uh, want to win just her ninth cap for Canada. A couple of changes too for the United States. It's in danger for Shannon Box. One of the new arrivals, Heather Mitz, getting her first touch. She's come on for uh, Becky Sauerbrunn. And uh, tonight's substitution fueled by Gatorade. Morgan Heath, the other part of the equation there. She's in for Heather O'Reilly. We'll see Heather Mitz back. Julie, at the age of 32, she's much luck with World Cups and injuries, isn't she? I know, always getting these injuries right before World Cups. Good to see her able to go to this one over in Germany, although she didn't get any time on the field over there. She's had better luck with Olympics, though, as Abby Wombach takes over. Chance here for Tobin Heath, his first touch. In dangerous territory. The dancing step over moves from Tobin Heath, but very quickly. Ended by Sophie Schmidt. What a pass that is. Julian is on her way here. She's all alone. Tim Creedy steaming forward to board. Julian has the inside track. Still looking for an opening. And Parker. No, no a better opportunity evaporated for Julian, but Canada still trying to force the issue. What a ball that was by Sophie Schmidt over the top. And Julian found herself 1v1, which you don't see happen very much. She is Christina Julian. We call her Corky. A nickname in Canada. We've at James Madison University. She may have had an opportunity if she'd pulled that trigger. She had her, she had Christy Rampone beat, which is another thing you don't see very often. Didn't pull the trigger and Rampone recovered. And Cecilman with the cross. Beyond the reach of Tank Reedy, but retrieved by Parker. Great service! And that same end has seen Woodwork struck for a third time. A bullet of a shot by Julian. But the post coming to the rescue for Hope Solo. And a strong first few minutes by Canada, though. And here they come out. What a nice look by Julian because she's coming across her body behind her. She's able to put that almost on frame. Nice opportunity. Schmidt with a long clearance. So somehow this game has stayed scoreless. John Herdman doesn't know how. And saw his side get a 1-1 draw against the United States, remember, on Saturday at Livestrong Park in Kansas City. Yes. Women's team coming to two new MLS venues for the first time. 
this season. Uh, the celebration tour. And Wilkinson in on one back. Stephanie Cox. Possession in tight quarters. Tobin Heath trying to uh, engineer some space and has done so. It's the crossing two. And the Nitz is waiting on the edge of the area. Reacher, but Shannon Box has it back for the US. You're getting an early glimpse of what Tobin Heath can do. Oh, a chance here for Rapino. She can settle and shoot. A couple of deflections the sting out of the shot and that will be uh, a gift for Labay. Abby Wambach telling her she should have played it out wide. Tobin Heath overlapping around her and, and Tobin Heath is one of those incredibly technically gifted players who loves to take on on the outside. The problem is, is she's had a slew of injuries and illnesses over the last two years and we haven't seen her at her full potential. Ankle surgery in 2010 kept her out of almost the entire WPS season. Nice to see her healthy again and gaining confidence. Four uh, substitute appearances at the World Cup. She was the youngest member of the 2008 Olympic squad, wasn't she, Tobin Heath? And it's the Olympics that the US have in mind next. Their next big challenge. Remember Olympic qualifying beginning January the 19th. The whole tournament we played uh, just up the road from here, really, in Vancouver at BC Place over 10 days in January. Top two teams from CONCACAF will get to go to London next summer. And Before we get your thoughts on that, Julie, uh, it's going to be a significant substitution here because uh, Hope Solo is going to depart. Having uh, received officially her 100th cap tonight in front of her fans in the Northwest. She's going to make way for a goalkeeper winning just her second cap. Now let's listen to the reception that Hope Solo gets. And great that she got to be celebrated in the Northwest where she's from. She said yesterday how important that was for her and her family. Wonderful career. Well, maybe a different sort of career starting to open up for her as well. She's in training every day. As her uh, dance partner Max with her wherever she goes. She was walking away from training yesterday going straight to rehearsals. And that will be an interesting balance if she continues to progress in the show because that show goes all the way through December. And as you just mentioned, Adrian, Olympic qualifiers are in January. Yeah. And Tobin Heath continuing her electric start. It's a nice shot too. Armed away by Labay. Tobin Heath making things happen inside the penalty area. Reedy is going to get there too. Certainly it was three against three. Reedy's pass wasn't the best, but she picks up the pieces. Now Kelly Parker. Mitchell Bueller. The Navy unmoved. And that's one that Tobin Heath didn't quite get right. You see Heath and Rapino playing together out there. Rapino's diagonal ball was perfectly angled for Amy Rodriguez. And here is the potential of a Tobin Heath and a confident Tobin Heath. Takes a nice touch to get around and then pulls it back and just with a little bit of a window tries to get something on frame. And what a nice save for LeBay who's just come into the game cold into the second half as the new keeper for Canada. Well, one back. Just out of your picture, left a foot in there on uh, 
Rianne Wilkinson. Wilkinson recovering quickly enough. Kathy Wombach missed the 2008 Olympics, didn't she? Breaking her leg in that final warm-up game. Another heartbreaking story of someone missing right before a big competition. Literally, the game, last game before they were going over to Beijing. And a switch here for Canada is it Desiree Scott coming on for Kaylin Kyle. 25th cap uh, for her. She plays up in Vancouver. 300 miles away from here. A high five. Matheson, good looking delivery and the bounce. Well, the bounce was awkward. And it ends up in the arms of Jill Lloyden. Good night for Jill Lloyden, who was born in Boston, grew up in New Jersey. It's her second cap. The first was against China a year ago. It's Parker on the turn. She's looked to. Really creative at times, Kelly Parker. She spread that wide for Tancredi. Nice little turn by Kelly Parker, as you said, Adrian. In that, in that whole position, she's sitting right in between those two forwards. Finds that seam, and she's been distributing well from that central position. Big game in the English Premier League coming up at this Saturday. Hope you can get up early for uh, Manchester City against Everton. This Premier League are presented by FIFA Soccer 12, 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. You can join Ian Dark and that's Steve McManaman. The City, to a great start in the English Premier League, but dropping points for the first time last weekend. John Herdman, incidentally, the uh, new coach of Canada, is a big Newcastle United fan, I hear, Julie. Mm -hmm. And here we thought he was a Sunderland fan. Yep. He's going to give him a big hug. That's where my in-laws are. And he was a former Sunderland youth coach before he moved to New Zealand. He goes, ah, I'm Newcastle. Now, Rodriguez, but she's offside. I've seen the offside flag come up too many times tonight. First time in Portland for the U.S. women's team since uh, October of 2007. They've been here a total of 10 times now and only lost once. I'm sure it was a game you'd rather not be reminded about, Julie. Semi-final 2003 here. That was back when it was uh, the PGE Park or the Civic Stadium. Old Germany took it to us that day. Still hurts. Abby one back. On the same wavelength as Shannon Box. Something yeah, productive looked like it was going to open up there. Instead, it's Canada. And Tancredi, little uh, touched on header. No problems for Lloyd. And you can see this game opening up, though. Co Co Canada getting confident getting some better looks in front of goal and more importantly, more possession on the ball. And here's Julian again, trying to just slide it in to Tancredi. Another very good ball, probably just needed to flick it a little higher, could have got something on because Jill Lloyden was off her line. Ready who went to uh, Notre Dame. He's Megan Rapino to college right here in Portland. Spring it wide for Heather Mitz. Abby Wombach is underneath this. Oh, and she won the ball in midair. He was all over La Bay, but she couldn't steer the header on target. Big chance getting away. And what a presence Abby Wambach is in front of goal. She just has this laser approach to a ball. Doesn't matter what's in her way. 
going up for this LeBay comes out and if you come out as a goalkeeper you got to get something on that when you're that far out Abby Wambach will want that one back she knows she had an open look there she scored in her last five games for the US she scored tonight she'd equal her personal best six in a row she sent back in 2004 Very similar to that Brazil goal she scored that we've all seen in the 122nd minute where the keeper comes out like that, obstructs your view a little bit. And in the Brazil game, she was just locked in. That was going back of the net the whole time. You have to wonder whether she's going to go 90 minutes. She didn't the other night. She came off for, for Alex Morgan. There's going to be a couple of changes happening now. Lauren. Cheney is going to come in. She's going to replace Laurie Lindsay. We're also going to see Kelly O'Hara moving on for uh, Rodriguez. So Lauren Cheney. Superb World Cup she had, didn't she, in Germany? Two goals and three assists. Interesting to see where she plays. Looks like she's going to play that, yeah, that deeper that, role again. That deeper possession, not holding, possession role in midfield <laughs> next to Shannon Box with Megan Rapino staying at the point of that triangle. Let's get some uh, thoughts on that change in formation from Pia Sundiga to a 4-2-3-1. Monica Gonzalez had a chance to talk to Pia at halftime. That's right. I asked Pia how the new formation is working out, and she said, great, except for one thing. When, um, when, when Abby Wambach moves out of that space at center forward, someone else needs to move into that. So that could be Rapino or really any of the other midfielders. She said she wants her team to get in behind the Canadian back line more, which we've already seen so far this half. Guys? Thanks, Monica. Swindaga trying to freshen things up. New uh, possession orientated approach. They've got possession here. In tight quarters. The final pass just a little astray from Rapino. And that's actually where I love the idea of Lauren Cheney in the hole. Megan Rapino out wide, putting Lauren Cheney right in behind Abby and even going at that line. Similar to what we've seen Messi do at Barcelona, Rooney do at, at Manchester United. I think that's a perfect position for Lauren Cheney. She's in a deeper role right now, but she said she's even more comfortable. She's played in that hole for Boston and for UCLA. She said, I'm still learning this deeper role. I like it though, because I'm getting the ball a lot. <laughs> well, this is Tobin Heath. He also looks to thrive in this new system, perhaps. A good looking cross towards one back. Pino trying to settle into the area. And Creedy providing the outlet for Canada. And Rachel Bueller winning that battle. And Chini. Jenny, uh, still the ultimate leading scorer at UCLA. I mentioned she was also going to go back to college a little bit in the fall. This is one back! Yes! One more for one back. The Abbey Road leads to goal. Six games in a row for her now. She matches her all-time best. And she puts it on that favored left foot. Good pressure by Kelly O'Hara there. And there's Abby with just hitting it perfectly. Great pressure to win the ball back quickly for the United States. And that's when you hit it with your sweet spot. Look at that left foot, it comes off clean. 
What a great goal. That is the danger and the power of Abby Wambach. She could score in so many different ways with her head in tight from the 18 when you don't think she even has a full chance. She makes a half chance into a full chance. An astonishing goal scoring record. 124 goals now at international level. She's now just six behind Christine Lilly, who's second all time. The U.S. goal scorers list. She is being serenaded by the big crowd here in Portland. At last, the breakthrough for the United States. One back on the move again, and going for it on the near post. And Labay had to react smartly. And why not? Why not take a look? Especially if you're hitting them that well with your left foot. Rapino. The prime the pump here. Good delivery, one back. Couldn't quite steer it back across goal. The United States looking to strike while the iron's hot. to hear your uh, half-time piece with Abby Wombach, Julie, uh, mentioning the possibility of playing on for the next World Cup. Well, she'll be 35. Yeah, and, and what she said was how much her heel was really bothering her. I said, you were telling me it was fine at the World Cup. She was, yeah, I was lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> Chance here, though, for Canada. I said, well, that wasn't very nice of you. So she said it, it, it was, it, and it has been. And so that is going to be something they have to monitor. I mean, the goal scorer like that, and when you look up that spine of this team for the United States, Hope Solo, as we talked about in the open, yep. shoulder, even after that major surgery exactly one year ago, that's still bothering her. Christy Rampone is 36. Shannon Box is 34. This will be the last run for for Rampone and Box in particular. But they know too that it's not a given they're in the Olympics. I mean, look at the World Cup qualifiers. If it had been the top two, they wouldn't be going to the World Cup and that's what the Olympics is. They gotta get out of that semi-final game in January to even get to the Olympics. That's a very good point, Julie. It's less than a year, isn't it? Since that shock defeat to Mexico. And, uh, teetering on the verge of not qualifying for Germany. Almost unthinkable now. Eula under real duress, but coped really well. You know, Kelly Parker literally all over her. So now the midway point of the second half in Portland. Abby Wombach's thundering shot the difference between the two teams ironic isn't it they've had so many opportunities inside the penalty area mm -hmm. tonight mm -hmm. I and mean, it was the, the long-range blockbuster that did the trick Canada suggesting they still have uh, plenty of fight left in them though this is Tancredi's she's offside This Canada uh, side without their all-time leading scorer and their inspiration. Christy Sinclair, who was given these two games off. She wasn't the only member of the Canadian national team to take a break, but the break was sorely needed, wasn't it? Cause... Yeah, Candace Chapman as well. I mean, the two of them just finished up the WPS season, winning the title with the Western New York Flash. And they haven't had a break for years. I mean, I, I, very understandable. I thought, uh, Julie, that Canada actually over-prepared for the World Cup in Germany. Almost a case of cabin fever setting in. They were in Italy for close to four months. This is 
Smiths and Box trying to combine. Kelly O'Hara involved on the far side. The Herman Trophy winner from Stamford in 2009. And Cheney and to O'Hara. The cross is in towards one back. It's two. Abby doubles up. And the United States are in the comfort zone. And Kelly O'Hara does so well to even get this whipped across. Brings her hips around, pulls it back enough, and Abby Wambach just beating Wilkinson to that back post ball, getting the inside edge. Wilkinson doesn't even know she's there. And not much the Bay can do on that back post, left wide open. And she went straight to uh, offer her thanks to Kelly O'Hara, didn't she? Great work from the Boston Breakers player to get that cross in. And the goals keep on coming for one back. The United States will hope they never stop. This is Rapino. Didn't quite have the angle worked out. And this is a good ISO look. She's pointing to where she wants it. Saying to Lauren Cheney, give me that ball. And really need to defend a bit better. You can see Wilkinson on that back post. Top ball watching. Just cap number seven tonight for Kelly O'Hara. Big contribution already. And that was one mismatch in the air, wasn't it? One back on Wilkinson. And there's only going to be one winner in that duel. That's a tough task for even the six foot twoers. Ball number 125 now for Abby Wombach. She draws even closer to Christine Lilly. There's five behind her now. As we see the switch, was uh, Wilkinson's last moment in the game. Being beaten in the air by Wombach. She makes way now for Robin Gale. ESPN 2's coverage of Major League Soccer continuing on Thursday night. A big Eastern Conference matchup with the Philadelphia Union against DC United. MLS presented by Adidas on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com. Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can join us for that. It really should be something very special indeed. Those two local rivals. We talked about the Timbers Army last night. I got a lot of tweets from the Sons of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Sons of Ben can match them in the volume department, that's for sure. This is Sophie Schmidt trying to turn up the noise here for Canada, but we're doing a shot too high. I think there's plenty of fans just up north from here in Seattle that would be sending you their messages too. It's all a sign of how healthy the game is, though, in the country. The supporters groups coming together. Two big games in two nights here at Gerald Wayne Field in Portland. And you, and you look at the clock, and it's 2-0 up. And some people think, well, this game is over. But you have a lot of players out there saying, I have almost 20 minutes here to make my mark because you know Pia is on the sideline looking four months time she's got to put a team together and not only that she's got to put a team together with three less players than she could bring here she can only take 18 to the Olympics eventually that's a good point Julie it's going to be a smaller squad in London this is uh, Rapino a thundering tackle from Moscato it was so well timed Combination through the middle, just breaks down Matheson trying to thread the killer through ball. Good read by Heather Mitt, and 
And the nice thing as well is that you got a lot of versatility here. Tobin Heath playing outside. She could play in that hole where Megan Rapino is. Lauren Chaney could play there. All of them have played out wide. Lovely play between Heath and Shannon Box. All the way through. O'Hara nearly got there. Heather Mitz does, but so, so too Sasselman. Here's another look at it on the other side. Again, Tobin Heath. Little flare. I love that. Shannon Box. There's your possession midfielder getting wide. Good to see. She's not just holding in central midfield, coming all the way forward. Coming all the way forward, Julie. Literally. Carnage in the penalty area is what Tobin Heath has uh, provided. Shannon Box. Cheney going down, but no foul given. One from Julianne Tancredi. This is uh, Diana Matheson. Royden had started to come for that. Rachel Bueller took command. She needed to. Robin Gale. Again, Tancredi jumping with Lloyden. And Jill Lloyden winning the duel. Good for a brief time in Australia, Jill Lloyden on loan with the, the W League team down there. Alex Morgan yet, have we, for the United States? I don't think we're going to have to wait that much longer. Right on cue. Here is number 13. And she's going to replace Shannon Box, interestingly. So she came off Abby one back. Looks like they're going to a 4-4-2 again. She'll go up top is my guess with Abby Wambach. Yeah, good work from Tobin Heath. on the overlap. Going to use it though, checks back inside. The United States encamped in Canadian territory. Looking for the knockout punch. US went to a 4-4-2 about this time in the last game against <laughs> Canada as well. well the huge <laughs> roar you just heard was for uh, Pia Sundarget. It's playing that she still got it. She does. It beautifully. Heather Mitz. Rapino. No, she just loved to get a goal here tonight. She was so close in the first half. There's two shots off the crossbar. mentioned the road ahead for the United States, Julie. Uh, January the 19th is when Olympic qualifying will start in uh, Vancouver. A couple of camps before that point, and actually one more friendly, which we can uh, officially announce tonight. They're going to play Sweden on November the 19th in Phoenix, Arizona. That will be the last uh, competitive game of the year for the U.S., so November the 19th against Sweden. Then they train in Los Angeles, it's looking like in December, and then she's gonna. Okay, Sunhaga will select her team after that camp and has talked about bringing in, as expected, quite a few 
players into those November and December camps. In terms of that qualifying tournament in Vancouver, these are the teams that are already there. There's going to be two more added from Central America. There'll be two groups of four. Only two spots available in this region. No uh, safety net of a playoff with the Olympics. No, no safety net. And, and really, Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. are the only ones with a realistic chance. Canada building towards the, uh, the same end. And the U.S. shouldn't have a problem, but you just never know. I mean, look at the Mexico results last fall for the World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, that was an absolute stunner. Out of nowhere, it seemed. <laughs> There's only been that two previous editions of Olympic qualifying in CONCACAF, and the United States have won both. Hosted Olympic qualifying, though it's always been somewhere else, Mexico and uh, Costa Rica, places they've been before. Another change forthcoming for Canada. One of the new uh, younger players coming on. This is Tina Romagnolo. She's going to come on for Diana Matheson. Romagnolo, who's uh, College at Syracuse. Getting her very first international appearance. Nice crowd to get it in front of. Nice game. And both parents originally from Italy. Born in Scarborough, Ontario. Now Alex Morgan. Tobin Heath. Heath sticking with it. A chance for Stephanie Cox to uh, kick across here, but too close to Labay. So switch back to 4 4 2 at the end of this game, as they did Saturday in Kansas City, Julie. And Pia mentioned that she was hoping in that 4-4-2 system, especially with Alex Morgan and her speed up top, that they would stretch the game a little bit more. We haven't seen that tonight when they've moved into that 4-4-2 system. There's Romagnolo. Good cross from her. Sunaga working on a change of formation, a little more planning involved in this uh, switch of formation than the uh, example of Sweden back at the World Cup. Remember that, Julie, when they changed their formation in the tunnel <laughs> before heading out to the uh, semi final against Japan? Yeah, I don't think that was a smart move. But this, I think, is a good move. I think it gives them versatility, it gives them flexibility. And she's got to be pleased, and it's going to be a work in progress. It gives you more options. And I think the tendency in this type of system. There's Alex Morgan. And they've been plugging away at that near post, Julie. Alex Morgan, the latest to try her luck. She loves to unleash it on that left foot. We've seen how well she can do it. But the challenge again in this formation is, is getting those numbers forward and getting players running in behind defenses because when you're Essentially, in a 4-5-1, you've got to make it convert into a 4-3-3. That would be a process for the United States. Pino's corner, Labay in trouble! It was nearly an own goal. It was uh, cleared off the line in the nick of time by Robin Gale. Robin Gale, formerly of the University of North Carolina. Saving at Canada. Could have been a self-inflicted wound too. But that 
for a sweeping pass from Bueller. Didn't quite find her target, but O'Hare has picked it up regardless. Morgan. Here's the corner kick again, and so tough when you have a player right in front of you. Alex Morgan blocking at LaBay. Does it go over the line here? The tire ball has to, it does not. Good call by the referee, no goal. And well done by Alex Morgan to just jostle in there. So tough for a goalkeeper when you have a player there. Well done to our cameramen as well. You know the goal line technology. We've got our cameramen. This is Melanie Booth. Kazire Scott. Canada need a goal in a hurry here. Not going to have any hope of uh, getting some sort of result. Julian. There will be positives and plenty of them for Canada to take out of the game, Julie, if they're going to end up on the wrong end of the scoreline. John Herdman. We certainly have some pluses to talk about. Plus, missing a few players with Sinclair out, Candace Chapman, both of them away. Some injuries. Temko is injured right now. Now, uh, let's have a look at our All State Good Hands save of the game. Go back to the first half for this one. Karina LeBlanc. And this was early. Wonderful reaction save by Karina LeBlanc. Amy Rodriguez wide open in the middle there. Does well to keep it low. LeBlanc keeping her team in the game. The U.S. had some good early looks. Yeah, that was the first big chance of the game, wasn't it? It's a feisty challenge for Abby Wambach, and she's going to add a yellow card to her two goals for her evening's work. Mm -hmm. I think that may be for persistent infringement. Two or three times she's gone in like that. Always the competitor. Hard to dial it down for a friendly. <laughs> Which is what we love. No such thing as a friendly, Adrian. A lovely touch from Wombat. Back to the football. Nice release Rapino. This Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan combination work together. A lot of uh, watchers of the United States women's team have wondered whether Wambach and Morgan could operate as a strike partnership full time, Julie. And I like that you have this nice balance of Abby, of course, being more the target type player, Alex Rodriguez, uh, sorry, Alex Rodriguez, Alex Morgan with the speed up top, like an Amy Rodriguez brought. brought. And on top of that, she scores clutch goals. I mean, look at some of the goals she scored for the United States. What a year she's had. This year is on the ball. The goal to get him into the World Cup in Italy in the playoffs. Great goal against France in the semifinal to put that game away. Yep. A goal, of course, in the final against Japan. She looked like it was going to win it. Seven shots uh, for Abby Wombach tonight. Four of them on goal. She had to be patient. Didn't look like the goal was going to come, but then two of them came within seven minutes. One with the head, one with the foot. And her opposite number, so to speak, for Canada is giving way here. Melissa Tancredi. And that was Diamond Simpson to come on. 18-year-old. Just her third cap tonight for Canada. 
And it's worth noting that John Herdman didn't even get a pick this roster. That's right. He was brought on just a few days before that first game. Tobin Heath had left Robin Gale on the floor there. Yeah. Went back for more. Gale managed to get the tackle in. Yeah, lost a pre-pick, wasn't it, by the Canadian Federation. John Herdman had uh, a total of three days before the first game in Kansas City to work with them. And they will have the Pan American Games coming up in Mexico in mid October as their next challenge. So they have competitive football before the qualifying process for the Olympics begins in January. The United States will not, says Rapino. Chaney back to Rapino. Is this the moment? Not quite. I thought Chaney was going to take it there. Because Chaney can take him from 30 yards out and put him in the upper, upper corner. Makes like she's going to take it, puts it back to Rapino. Possibly a little bit optimistic from that distance. Simpson. Pass was cut out easily by Bueller. ESPN 2's coverage of the Barclays Premier League Saturday morning. Our next game, Manchester City taking on Everton. At 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com. Barclays Premier League presented by FIFA Soccer 12. Here's Rapino surging forward, allowed to go a long way. Morgan, on it goes. O'Hara, similar sort of spot. Can she deliver the same sort of cross? Falls for Mitz! Oh, Heather Mitz, side footage. And bringing uh, a smart save out of Labay. Mitz has only ever scored twice for the US and not since 2004. Look at that grin. That would have been so great if she put that one in. Rapino's corner, one back climbing. Down its way to Tobin Heath. The header, and touch time! The flag stays down, and the United States have three, and it's Alex Morgan who is finishing the year just as she started it. Morgan has this wonderful ability to put herself in the right spot at the right time and she's just lingering in there as all great goal scorers do staying in the middle of it and is ready she makes it look easy but there's a real sixth sense for getting in there in the mix what a year it's been for Morgan it's her 10th international goal it proved to be the final kick of the game and the United States uh, Surging to a three-goal victory in the end here at Portland. Hope Solo played her part in the first half, made way early in the second half, when the game was still very much in the balance, Stuart. And I think the United States has to be pleased, given that they haven't had time together, they haven't worked on this new formation, they all admitted they were a bit rusty from the last two months of, of taking a break, finishing out WPS season. So good things to build on in this six-week break. And then you regroup in November and December and literally turn that page and think Olympic qualifiers, not mm. too far away. Lots to mull over for Pia Sundaga. She will be delighted, though, I'm sure, with the outcome of this after a hard-fought 1-1 draw in Kansas City. Uh, big improvement for the United States here tonight. They had their uh, work cut out for them at times against Canada but really powered on in the last half an hour of the game. Two from Abby Wambach and one from uh, Alex Morgan. Don't go anywhere. We'll be talking to Abby Wambach when we return to Portland after these words.